Welcome to Simpler Bible, a daily journey to biblical understanding. Today, we get into one of the most famous stories in the Bible. That is the story of David and Goliath. Uh, it is one that every kid has learned when you go to church, and it's one that I think we kind of quit talking about to some degree as adults, and then we kind of adopt it back into our theology, but maybe not appropriately. And so let's look today at 1 Samuel chapter 17 and 18, episode 78. Let's begin in verse 1 of chapter 17. Now the Philistines had gathered their armies for battle, and they were gathered at Soko, which belongs to Judah, and encamped between Soko and Azekah in Ephes Damim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah, and they drew up in the line of the battle against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on the mountains on one side, and Israel stood on the mountains on the other side with a valley between them. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Now, really quickly here, if his height is six cubits, a cubit is 18 inches, so this would be nine feet and nine inches. A span is the tip of the thumb to the tip of the pinky on a, on a grown man, about nine foot, nine inches. Now, this is how I was taught Goliath, and it doesn't change the story a whole lot, uh, but we think of this guy as really gargantuan. We think of him as pretty huge. Interestingly enough, most of your Bibles, or many of your Bibles, will have a footnote saying that the oldest manuscripts say that it wasn't actually six cubits, it was four cubits, which would make him six foot nine inches. Now, before you go, oh, well, he's not a giant then, have you ever stood next to somebody who's six foot nine? I'm six two, maybe six two and a quarter, and I have a few friends who are about six six, and I feel small compared to them, and I don't normally feel short. I don't normally feel little. One of these guys that I know that's six six is just a massive guy. If you if you've ever uh watch wrestling, if you've ever watched UFC and you've seen Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar is about this height and this size. And so still a very imposing figure. Okay. So anyway, hope that that didn't just ruin the story of David and Goliath for you if he was just six foot nine, but this is a big dude. It says in verse five, he had a helmet of bronze on his head. He was armed with a coat of mail and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had a bronze armor on his legs and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his spearhead weighed 600 shekels of iron. So that's a 15 pound, that's a 15 pound, just the tip of the spear and his shield bearer went before him. So imagine, uh, go and get your kettlebell, your 15 pound kettlebell or a 15 pound dumbbell or a 15 pound plate. And imagine that that's just the tip of the spear. That's how heavy that thing was. Verse eight, he stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? Are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourself and let him come down here to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants. So they're trying to avoid a major slaughter here. And they said, look, you pick one guy to come and fight me. If I win, we're the victors. If you win, you're the victors. And the Philistines said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now, David was the son of an Ephrathite. Remember that Ephrathite is a reference to Bethlehem. Okay. Uh, well, it says it here too, but just remember that that's the connection. Ephrathite of Bethlehem and Judah named Jesse. David's father, Jesse, had eight sons. Uh, we, we only see seven of them named for a long time. And then the eighth one will be named later. But he has eight sons total, of which David is the youngest. In the days of Saul, the man was already old and advanced in years. Verse 13, the three oldest sons of Jesse had followed Saul into battle. And the names of his three sons who went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and next to him, Abinadab, and the third, Shammah. David was the youngest. The three eldest followed Saul, but David went back and forth from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. For 40 days, the Philistine came forward and took his stand morning and evening. And Jesse said to David, his son, take for your brothers an ephah of parched grain and these 10 loaves and carry them quickly to the camp of your brother. Also take these 10 cheeses to the commander of their thousands and see if your brothers are well and bring some token from them. So they've been at battle for 40 days. And so far for 40 days, nothing has happened. The Philistines and the Israelites have not in engaged in battle, except for that Goliath has stepped forward every day and challenged the people of Israel. Now, verse 19. Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the Valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines, which is kind of a weird way to say that because 
they're lined up against them, but at this point, there's not fighting. David rose early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took the provisions and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the encampment of the host as they were going out to battle line, shouting the war cry. And Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. And David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage and ran to the ranks and went and greeted his brothers. As he talked with him, behold, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came up out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words as before what he's been saying for 40 days. And David heard him. All the men of Israel, when they saw him, fled from him and were much afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel, and the king will enrich the man who kills him with great riches. So Saul is going to enrich the man who kills him with great riches and give his daughter to him as a wife and make his father's house free in Israel, free from taxes. And David said to the men who stood by, Wait, what shall be done for the man who kills the Philistine and takes away this reproach from Israel? And then look at what David says. This is key in verse 26. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? David's reference here to the Philistines being uncircumcised isn't because he personally knew Goliath and he personally knew what was going on under Goliath's trousers. The uncircumcised comment here is that the circumcision of the Jewish people was a sign of the covenant they had with God. So what he's really asking is, who is this person who does not have a covenant with God? Who is this person that doesn't have a relationship with God that he should defy the armies of the living God? Verse 27, the people answered him in the same way, saying, So shall it be done for the man who kills him. Now Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why have you come down? With whom have you left those sheep in the wilderness? I know your presumption and the evil of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. So he's, Eliab, his brother, is angry at him. And you have to kind of go, well, why? It shouldn't be hard for us, because what we looked at a few days ago is, or yesterday, in fact, is, is that uh, David has been anointed king. So Samuel has already shown up. Eliab was passed over by God, and David has been anointed king. This is not something his brothers have forgotten, and so his brothers are kind of ticked about it. Verse 29 says, And David said, What have I done now? It was just a word. And he turned away from him towards another and spoke in the same way, and the people answered him before. So David is like really wanting to make sure that he knows what the reward is going to be for those who, for whoever defeats Goliath. So, verse 31. When the words that David spoke were heard, they were repeated then before King Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth. And look at this. And he's been a man of war from his youth. So this isn't just a big guy. This is a guy who's been a soldier. Goliath's been a, a soldier since his youth. David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father. Why does he say used to keep sheep for his father? Well, you might remember that King Saul is now being oppressed by an evil spirit or a harmful spirit that's come from God. And whenever this harmful spirit comes upon King Saul, he needs somebody to play music for him. And David is playing that harp. And that's what's relieving this. And so David has been already included. He's living half the time he's living around King Saul. The other half the time he's back at home with his dad. And so David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. If he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both the lions and the bears. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. So Saul clothed David with his armor and put the helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. And David strapped his sword over his armor. And he tried in vain to go, for he had not tested them. So remember, Saul is head and shoulders taller than anybody else. Saul's armor is not going to fit David. David's still at this point a young man. He's not 10 or 11. He's not something like that uh, because he's old enough to be married. But he's a young man. And, and so Saul, who is this imposing king, remember head and shoulders taller than everybody else, his armor is not going to fit David. So David said to Saul, I can't go with these for I have not tested them. So David took them off and he took in his staff. He, sorry, he took his hand and his staff in his hand and he chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in the shepherd's pouch. 
his sling was in his hand and he approached the Philistine. Now, why he chose five stones? Uh, we know that Goliath has at least one brother. That'll be mentioned later in when it's talking about David's mighty man after David becomes king. But there are s- several other imposing people from Gath, from the same place that Goliath is from. And we don't know, is David preparing for all these other guys or what? But whatever the reason, he picks up five rocks. Some people will say it's because David or that Goliath had four brothers. He has one brother for sure, and there were some other imposing people from the same city that Goliath was in. So what David knew about that or we or didn't know about that, we're not sure of. So his sling is in his hand, and he approached the Philistine. Verse 41, And the Philistine moved forward and came near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him. He hated him, for he was but a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come against me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. And David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin. And I love this line. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. So he goes, look, you're coming against me with a sword. You're coming against me with a javelin. You're coming against me with a spear. But I am coming against you in the name of the Lord our God. Verse 46, David continues and he says, This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you down and I will cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. So again, this kind of reminds us a little bit of what God did to the Egyptians that God uh, judged the Egyptians through these 10 plagues and then ultimately drowning the Egyptian army in the Red Sea so that the whole earth would hear of God's fame. David says the same thing is going to happen today. Verse 47, and so he says that the whole earth may hear that there is a God in Israel, verse 47, and that this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword or spear, for the battle is the Lord's and he will give it into our hand. So that this assembly being the Israelites who for 40 days have been too fearful to go against this Philistine. So David says, the whole earth is going to hear about what we did. Remember, the Philistine army, he says, you guys are going to be food for the wild beasts and the birds. The whole earth is going to hear what happened today. And this assembly, the Israelite army, he goes, they'll come to learn also that the Lord doesn't save by sword or spear, but the Lord saves by his own power, by his own hand. Verse 48, when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag, took out the stone and slung it. And it struck the Philistine on his forehead and the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the ground. This again makes us think of Genesis 3.15, where there is the foreshadowing, the foretelling of uh, Christ crushing the head of the serpent, crushing the head of his enemy. And that picture is used throughout the rest of the Bible. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. And there was no sword in the hand of David. David ran, stood over the Philistine, took his own sword and drew it, took Goliath's sword, because David has none, took Goliath's sword, drew it out of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and Judah rose with a shout and pursued the Philistines as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron. Remember, there were five lords of the Philistines. Two of these cities, Gath and Ekron, were cities that the Philistines uh, continued to take over and over, take from the people of Israel. And so we saw a a couple of days ago that they had, the Israelites had regained these cities. We saw that kind of earlier in Samuel. The Israelites had regained these cities under Samuel. And now these cities have gone back to the Philistines and Israel is regaining them again because these cities went back and forth. Now, one of the things that I want us to consider for a moment is that typically when this text is taught, uh, the text is taught from the perspective of kind of the application goes something like this. And if David can defeat his giants, you can fe- defeat your giants. It, it's it's taking the text and it's making it personal in a way that the text was not meant to be. So people say, look, whatever your giant is, you can face it. Um, there are songs about it, like, you know, I, I can slay my own giant or whatever. Like we, we sing these songs, we, we know these stories and people tell us, hey, what... Remember, David slew his giant, you can slay yours. I I want you to remember a couple of things. One, Goliath was not David's giant, okay? Goliath was of the Philistine army. It was was an enemy, and David makes this point in both of his many speeches. Uh, Goliath is an enemy of God. Goliath is defying God. And David goes against him in the name of the Lord. David is, is representing God, and so... So it's not David's personal giant. This isn't a this isn't 
something that we should do that go, man, I've got this really hard challenge in my life. It's my giant. I've just got to defeat it. No, that's not the point to take from this text. The, the point is that God, uh, the, God defends his name. <laughs> and in this case, God used Goliath. Now, chapter 18, really quickly, because we're running out of time. Uh, David's successful in wherever he goes. They, they chase the Philistines. They finish putting the Philistines to death and to flight. And so it's not just a one day battle. They chase these Philistines to all these cities and they destroy them. When they're coming back, when they're coming back to Jerusalem from war, this is key. Uh, chapter 18, verse six, as they were coming home, when David returned from striking down all the Philistines, the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet Saul with tambourines and songs of joy and musical instruments. And the women sang to one another as they celebrated, Saul has struck down his thousands and David his ten thousands. So Saul, who has been king at this point for a long time, nearly 40 years, and David, who has just been victorious for a day in a couple of days, the, is getting more praise than Saul. And the Bible says in 18.8, Saul was very angry and this saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed to David 10,000s and to me, they've ascribed only thousands. What more can he have? Look at this. What more can he have but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day on. And the next day, a harmful spirit from God rushed upon Saul raved within his house while David was playing the lyre, as he did day by day. Saul had his spear in his hand. Saul hurled the spear, for he thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David evaded him twice. So the next day, Saul tries to kill David twice. And it says, Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him, but had departed from Saul. So what Saul is going to do in the rest of this chapter is he's going to try to have David marry one of his daughters. David is going to end up married to, to Saul's youngest daughter, Michael. And as, as payment, a dowry price, he says, I want 200 or I want 100 foreskins of, of the Philistines. And he's hoping that when David goes to collect this dowry, that David will be put to death. And God is with David and David is given victory and Saul remains jealous. So this idea of Saul ready to kill David, uh, this is going to be all over. And this will be their relationship for the duration of the book of Samuel. Join us tomorrow. We'll pick up with the story then. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for joining with us today at Simpler Bible through another section of scripture where we come to know and understand God a little bit better. Look, if you're brand new to Simpler Bible, we have all sorts of resources available for you. Go to our website, simplerbible.com, and there you can find these videos. You can find our podcast. You can find links to our social media, and you can even find a blog post with additional scriptures if you want to go into a little bit more study than we had time to cover in this podcast and video today. We hope that this tool will be exactly that for you, a tool. Not something that replaces your daily walk with God, but something that enhances your daily walk with God and helps you to know and enjoy Him more. Thank you so much for being part of this, and we'll see you again tomorrow.